Tommy Robinson. How dare you, white boy? Fight me. You have to coexist with me. I don't have to coexist with you. Alex Jones, his mom, his dad, his oh, granddad. Oh. That fat piece of shit. I'd slap his face. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. If you're watching this video in a Salah time, please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done. Please check out the description section of this video to support the channel. I was sent a podcast that brothers Sneeko, Muhammad Hijab and Musa Adnan collaborated on together. Let's just say a lot of issues were addressed in a very confrontational manner, with Muhammad Hijab in particular letting loose on anti-Muslim bigots Tommy Robinson and Alex Jones for their recent and long-term disrespect of Islam and Muslims. Let's take a look at the first clip where the brothers address Tommy Robinson and his followers in regards to the recent UK riots. Am I same. speaking a foreign tongue? Listen, white boy, are you, am I speaking a <laughs> Listen, this is your language. How dare you, white boy? How dare you let an ethnic like me overpower you in language? Tommy How is... dare you let an ethnic like me speak words in clear, pristine, academic English language and you the white boy you the chav can't understand a thing I'm saying you have to distort and fabricate and you have to lie about cool. what I am saying I mean to prove that they don't understand basic English or Arabic it's Allah Allah who the f is Allah absolutely <laughs> it's God read it's God in Arabic. Absolutely. It's just like I'm seeing them chanted everywhere. People are saying, "What should the Muslim? How should the Muslim community react to all of this?" I say, "Let these chavs get it out of their system. You stay at home, you relax, you enjoy yourself, go on holiday. Don't interrupt an enemy when they're making a mistake. They're scoring an own goal, bro. These guys have been telling us all along that it's black people that are violent, that it's Muslims that are violent. Now they're going out and looting. They're stealing stuff from the shop. They're stealing alcohol from the shop." They're stealing crocs from the shop. Bro, how do you have a guy, Tommy Robinson? Well, Chav is stealing a croc from the shop. That's not his name, by the way. Stephen Laxley Lennon. Stephen, Stephen Lennon. Lennon Come, on, Come on, Chav. Bro, how do you, how do you guys have on, a guy yeah. sitting on a resort going like this? Yeah. Right? Is he doing that? Orchest in Cyprus. He's having a cheeky pint. Or 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 orchestrating all of this, and you lot are doing his He's day He's spreading work. all five foot two, two inch of his body on the, on the beach chair, yeah? And, you're, and, and he's you're not even occupying the entire beach chair when he's doing that because he's, he's like half of the beach chair that he's spreading. He's trying. And he's, and, and, and he's, he's a trying. Zionist. He's a Zionist plant. Yeah. He's, in fact, forget about that. He's openly Zionist. He's getting money from them. For those minority of chavs that are on the streets, and please continue. This is what I say to the English. Listen, you have immigration concern. You have this concern. Keep, keep looting. Do your thing. Please continue. We don't care. You have to understand. You are embarrassing yourself. You're creating a case study. You're humiliating yourself. I would say to the Muslims, just lay back. Let them do this thing. Obviously, if they come near you, that's a different story. I'm not, yani, we're not talking about that. If they come near the masjid, or they come near you, or if they come near our women. Plus. I mean, that's, that's a different story, brother. I mean, I mean, the Muslims know what to do in that situation. Look, man, these guys, I'm sorry to say, we, we challenged them to physical fight. They said no. We challenged them to intellectual argument. They said no. I challenged the right wing to produce one heavyweight. Any heavyweight in the world will have a one-on-one. -on -one. And they said, no, you guys don't want to fight. You guys don't want to debate. You guys want to break shops and steal crocs. No Attack problem. Attack mosque. We'll give you crocs. You can deliver it to your master, Tommy Robinson. We'll get you the size four sh crocs that you can put on his dwarf foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, little midget. You can put it in his little foot like that. The ironic thing is that they keep saying that they're Britain first, they're nationalistic. Yeah. But then they're championing this dude who's so clearly funded by Israel. At what point is someone like uh, Elon Musk going to be like, okay, this guy's... I was thinking about directly that. inciting violence. Why did these guys come on the street? Like, how did they even know to go in the street? It must have been through social media, right? It is stirred up by the major figureheads on Twitter. Okay, I understand the tensions are high, and rightly so. And the main takeaway I had from that clip was that Muslims should keep themselves safe and keep themselves as far away as possible from the trouble as Muhammad Hijab said. However, I don't agree with referring to someone's skin colour as Muhammad Hijab did. For Muslims, it doesn't matter what colour someone is, white or non-white. There is no racial hierarchy in Islam. Respect to all the white Muslim brothers and sisters. However, Muhammad Hijab and Sneeko were both right when they pointed out the lack of intellectual capacity in Tommy Robinson and his followers via their lack of understanding of 
proper English and basic Arabic, which is evident through their hateful chants of who the F is Allah, astaghfirullah. Muhammad Dajjab was pointing out the irony that he is more skilled in English than the English native Islamophobes who can barely speak their own language to a proficient level, as well as pointing out that he articulately states facts, whereas Tommy Robinson just resorts to his usual idiotic anti-Muslim propaganda slogans. Brother Muhammad correctly stated that these riots make the people involved in them look like the very thing they stereotype Muslims and minorities to be, and that is violent, extreme and harbouring criminal intent. Sneeko and Muhammad Hijab both stated that Tommy is a Zionist agent. The theory that Tommy incited the riots to distract from what Israel is doing in Palestine is not too far-fetched if I'm completely honest. The brothers pointed out how Tommy Robinson continued to fan the flames of the riots from outside of the UK, and the idiots that follow him sacrifice themselves by committing petty crimes against the very country they claim they want to protect, and are doing so under the false premise Tommy is Britain first, when in reality he prioritises Israel before the United Kingdom because they pay his bills. Brother Muhammad said that Tommy and his cronies refuse to settle their issues with him in a debate or a sanctioned boxing match, and instead prefer to spread hate online that leads to the violence we see spilling out onto the streets. Sneakle called for Elon Musk to ban individuals like Tommy Robinson from X like he previously was, and rightly so, as X is where most of this type of anti-Muslim and racist propaganda is spread. Let's take a look at the next clip where the brothers expose the real motives of far-right rioters and why they are so filled with hatred and anger towards Muslims and minorities. How comes that there's more people that came on the street for pro-Palestine protest oh and anti-racist thing in Walthamstow than did for this? Don't make this out like what we're talking about. In each of these protests, how many came out? Maximum 2,000, 3,000? 5,000? Bro, look at what's Okay, happening. okay, 10,000. Continue the riots, make a mockery out of yourself, humiliate yourself. Let us see how much of a criminal mind you are. Do you think that's gonna change government policy? Like how, does the media make it seem worse than it really is? How bad is the UK right now? I haven't seen anything in, you know, in London. I've seen in uh, on the news like everybody else, Southport, this other place in Manchester. Yeah. I know I've seen recently Hounslow. I think it's pretty bad. No one can say that Islamophobia doesn't exist. Bro. That's what it's all about. It's not really about that? Britain first. You see the white Muslim women in Bosnia, yeah. all covered up in the yeah. this. Compare it to the white women who are going to Taylor Swift hey. concerts with the giant water hey. bottles. Yeah. What are we talking it's about? Like, which one would the, the far right, what would they prefer? But like I, the people that uh, pretend to be Nazis and stuff, would they prefer a, the exactly. white woman covered up in a cob exactly. or twerking at a Taylor Swift concert? That's what they prefer, yeah. twerking at a Taylor Swift concert. No, they know deep in their hearts yeah. that it, a lot of it's jealousy. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seeing that these women are pious, yeah. that they're under a sort of rule that keeps yeah. them covered and keeps them respected. I'm not even going to talk about riots. I'm not even going to talk about what this right, right wing and stealing crocs. You don't know how to be a man. I understand that your bar is so low, your woman's having a drink and she's having with another man, you're scared that No you're wonder you're upset. Another man. No wonder you're upset. You're all this. this is your standard. This is your standard. You need cross. Ach, you're not a man. How can you talk to us? How can you tell us how to be with our women? How do you see this, this going forward? I mean, we're seeing what's happening in the UK right now. Uh, there's obviously some growing resentment towards that and the, the growing Islamic population. Yeah. How could the two coexist? I'm telling the right wing now, what are you going to do? We're British citizens, we're born in the West. What are you going to do? Strip our passport? Are you going to deprive us of our, our citizenship? Is that what you want to do? You want to kick us out? Try that, we'll see what happens. If you want to, if you're trying to harm us, harm us. Uh, try and harm us. We're 5 million people. Has that ever happened in, in modern history where you kick 5 million people out? Is that even a realistic target? You're not going to be able to achieve that. Britain would have to change its constitution. If you can do that, do it. No problem. Then we'll be forced to go to another country. If you achieve your objective, then I'll be in Egypt or he'll be in Pakistan or whatever it is. If not, then shut, shut up. Shut up and be quiet because you're going to have to live with us. And that's the reality. You're going to have to coexist with us. It's not we have to coexist with you. You have to coexist with us. There was a white man that killed three uh, black girls and there wasn't the same outrage. Yeah, yeah. Well, why not the same outrage? What's, what, you know it's selective of what they've shown yeah. the media to what's try the name to stir of the, What's the name of the white guy that killed the three black girls? Why are you not doing rights for that? You have to show all of these girls that have been killed the same level of uh, care. Would you care at all about coexisting with the non-Muslim? Of course, bro. Undoubtedly, bro. But it's, they have to also care about coexisting with me. I've had enough of bending the knee and so, yeah, I'm going to coexist with you. Aki, at this point, I, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm not going to beg you to be my friend. Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Are you are you mad? Let's okay. say for the sake of argument, we do, you don't need Muslims. But we're still here, though. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> so what are you going to do? You see this passport? Mm. I want you to take this away from me. That's the challenge. Come and fight me for it. If you're saying that you don't want me to be in your country, if that's the issue, deport him. It's like, come and take it. And there's five million of these. Is that a reasonable thing? Do you think you're going to achieve that objective? You are going to fail. Is this going to be resolved? Is this going to blow over in a couple of weeks? People move on to the next thing. Is that what's going to happen? Well, in September, none of this is going to be there mm -hmm. because they're all going to go back to work and school and stuff like that. The far right, I just want them to know as well. We're going to say, look, here you have these white people destroying houses and this and that. 
they're British, native, indigenous, etc, etc, etc. But look at them. Do you want to commit crimes? Who am I to stop you from committing crimes? If you want to be a thug, you know, it's just a fine choice for a person like you. It's a fine choice for a loser. Muslims, don't get involved in this. No, don't. Yeah, don't. Honestly, trust me, just leave them. 100%. You don't need to do anything. All you need to do is defend yourself if someone tries to attack you. That's fair enough. Yeah. And if you need to bring a few people here and this and that and Def organize efforts. Defend the defend, mosque. And... Like security. If you need to pay, pay a bit of money for professional security and this and that, do these things. But don't do anything more than that. Mohammed Dajab made the point that many more people have attended pro-Palestinian gatherings and the recent anti-racism counter-protests in comparison to the riots to highlight the fact their numbers are low. And I must add that despite these larger attendances, there were relatively no incidents of crime compared to the riots. And why is that? It's due to the quality of people and their intelligence levels. Brother Mohammed made the point that the objective of the far-right crowd to deport everyone they consider non-British, whether they are born in Britain or not, is an impossible task. Don't be fooled by these riots being disguised as anti-immigration. The Islamophobic chants, as well as the assaults on black and brown people, expose their true motive. Brother Hijab stated that the removal of 5 million Muslims from the UK is unfeasible, even on a government level, and the people who are advocating for this are absolute morons who are not living in reality. And that these far right individuals that harbour these resentments against other groups are the ones that need to learn to coexist and not the other way around. I was glad the brothers said they do care about coexisting with non-Muslims also because we should all care. We're all human and the only way to live peacefully is to be kind and tolerant towards each other regardless of our background or faith as there's room for all of us. I like how the brothers said that Islamophobes act and think the way they do because of ignorance and envy due to how Islam honours its followers especially in regard to the roles of men and women. Brother Sleeko asked if the rights would end soon. I personally think we're at the tail end of it now, especially with the anti-racism counter-protests now happening and with the prison sentences being handed out to the rioters. But I have to go back to the point about the social media presence of instigators like Tommy Robinson. If people like him remain on platforms like X and face no legal repercussions for their part, then what's stopping this from happening over and over again? Let's take a look at the last clip where Mohammed Dajab and Sneeko took shots at Alex Jones for his Islamophobia. I challenge Alex Jones who would debate about this after he called this disgusting but uh, has no response. Would you, would you debate him about the subject or you find it work? no oh, alex jones i'd debate him i'd fight him. i'd slap his face you know if he wants to fight me if he wants to debate me if he wants to engage in any way shape or form that fat piece of shit, i'd slap his face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and oh i'd humiliate God. him alex jones is a fraud he's nothing he's a nobody he has there's no accolades he has no achievements so to say who are you alex jones he exposed the globalist agenda listen alex you're nothing you're not look, look at my face look at me this is the face of a man who you could wish to be who you could dream to be who you could you can pray to whoever the hell you pray to or whatever the hell you do to be tell me what can you do to me shout at me with your stupid voice talk about islam what, what have you done what have you done in your life does your mom love you boy alex jones does your mom love you this is my question if i was her, I'd, I'd hate you i'd spit on you if i was there She's nothing. She's nothing and you're nothing. It's hard to say. Yeah. Oh, no, no. What did his mom do, man? Your, your mom is nothing, actually. <laughs> what? What? Alex Joe, your mom is nothing and you're nothing. His mom might be a very nice person. I don't care. She's nothing. I, be, I nothing. bet she's a nice lady. All right. Uh, um... She's nothing and he's nothing. Come on, come on, Alex, come and get me now. You heard me right. I said your mother's nothing. Come and get me now. <laughs> he hasn't slept. He's sleeping. He hasn't five. slept. <laughs> Guys, we're waiting for Fajr prayer. Your mother. Oh my God. <laughs> come on, oh Alex. Man. Come oh. and get me now. But his mother is nothing and he is nothing. His father is nothing. His whole family is nothing. Do you nothing? What have you achieved? He's Tell been... me what the Jones have achieved. I want to know what the Jones family has achieved in Oklahoma, you hillbilly, you redneck. What have you achieved, you Billy? What have you achieved, redneck? <laughs> what has the Jones family achieved? Tell me one accolade that your dad done. Tell me one thing that your dad done. What did he, what war did he fight in Vietnam? <laughs> that hillbilly achieved. What did you achieve, boy? Huh? What did that hillbilly achieve? What did your hillbilly father achieve? Tell me what you achieved. Tell me what that redneck achieved. Huh? Talk about Islam. Get out of here, you hillbilly. Well, I don't think you're talking about Islam. You just said that we're disgusting for our, our beliefs on the age of marriage. Was he calling Islam a cancer? Alex Jones, his mom, his dad, his oh, granddad. Oh, wow. Okay, so wait, August 8th? This was today. He tweeted, No way! Oh, okay, my God. all right. Tommy Robinson, based on Sharia law, this, this is Islam and this is why I oppose okay. it. Alex Jones says, a pedo cult. Say no more. Shut up, hillbilly! Of course, he's the American chav. Well, his mother's, his mother's. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, his mother. Okay. 
<laughs> his mother's done. Wow. His mother's done. Okay, I didn't know he said this. Alex Jones, you're too afraid to talk about Zionism. You've been running from that topic. You talk about Zionism. Talk about Israel. Look how quick you are to talk about Islam. What do they get on you? You're fraudulent. Retweeting. Tell me, Roberts. Tell me more, Alex Jones, about your mum. All right. I want to know more about that, Mrs. Jones. Wow, that was pretty crazy. As you saw, Sneeko said Alex Jones initially disrespected him and Mohammed Hijab in regards to a podcast they did covering the age of marriage. And brother Sneeko in return challenged Alex to a debate and Alex didn't respond. However, Alex did do a recent podcast with Tommy Robinson and the two of them seemed to have found some common ground through their Islamophobia. As you saw from the tweets Sneeko described. I completely understand Mohammed Hijab's anger at Alex Jones for disrespecting Islam. However, I disagree with the brother disrespecting Alex's mother, father and grandfather. This is not the Islamic way. We should leave family members out of it. I was glad to see brothers Musa and Sneeko be more level-headed and not join in in those types of insults and even say his mother is probably a nice lady. By all means, debate and do your boxing matches, but let's not talk about mothers and fathers. I'm sure Muhammad Hijab would run rings around Alex Jones in those scenarios, but let's not be mistaken. Alex Jones is a despicable Islamophobe and I have zero sympathy for him due to his continuous disrespect towards my religion and fellow believers. And I Sneeko pointed out Alex has no backbone when it comes to speaking about Zionists, but is the opposite in regards to Muslims. It would be good to see these debates take place, but they're not likely to happen due to Tommy and Alex cowering away. One thing I've realised during these riots is that we're not the bad guys. We're just trying to live our lives and be true to our faith, and we must maintain that position as it will benefit us more in the long run than the hateful people that oppose us. Thank you for watching. Make sure to join my free Telegram group via the link in the description, where we as Muslims can speak freely and without censorship about issues like this. And remember to like, subscribe, and become a channel member for access to exclusive content. Until next time, inshallah, jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.